block up to my feet, hurt the slayer, yeah, yeah. better yeah. off work to the good, I'm bad, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. took a ride in the L, L, come bad, I'm took a hold down, where to kill me. But Tubi got to pay us a good amount of money. Right, 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 so, right. I ain't tripping on that, but. So, yeah. and that's what you do, you do the contracts and for us, exactly. getting the money, and that's yeah. the same thing you did for the Triple D and Triple D Revenge. Yep. So what is that process like, like shopping the movie to get the money, and what is this the money for? You have to shoot the movie in order to get the money, or do you are you getting the contracts to get the money to shoot the movie? Um, it could go either way. You know what I mean? Okay. It, it all depends. All right. Like typically, you want to. This is what in the film industry you you do what's called a proof of concept. Right. And it's basically you filming it like a, almost a trailer. You didn't even finish the whole film, but you film enough parts where. You, they get an idea of what the film is going to be like. So okay. that's called a proof of concept. So if you get a proof of concept together, then you can shop that to like investors to see if they want to invest in the movie. And what I've learned uh, when you try to get an investor in the movie, the investor got to understand that the movie may not make money. Right. And you might not get no money back from it. So either you're going to invest in it as as a, without with with the knowledge you won't get paid. Or you can invest in it and try to figure out how you're going to get paid. You know what I mean? Right. So what I typically, what I did with the last two contracts is I gave them a, a, like a percentage chart of how. If we make this, this is what you'll get. You know what I mean? And, and you get three options out of that percentage chart. Right. You can choose one you want based on your investment. So the, the triple D number one, they... They chose a, an option that if they invest fifty thousand, they'll get X amount of dollars back. So right. That's how it basically closed. But it all depends on how you want to do it. And the the logical way to do it is just to film it first. If you if if you have a script and they can read the script and they believe in it, then they'll they'll you'll have somebody to invest in it from there. Right. Like, like boom, yeah, I'm gonna give you the money for this because I I love this. And plus, you gotta have your name out there. People gotta know you. Right. If they don't know you, it's very hard. It's very right. hard. So that's why I think I I have kind of an advantage because I know people already in the industry okay. because I've been making contact. Right. So without making contact, you won't be able to even really understand how to get investors. You know what I mean. Right. So, right. But yeah, I, in my opinion, I would rather try to give them the script first so they can read it mm -hmm. and then make a decision. And plus, you got to have something tangible for like what you've done in the past. What have you done? It's like, if you ain't did shit in the past, so I really don't know anything about you. Right. What's your name? Like, if your name is not in the IMB, IMDB, which is like where all actors sh shit is at. Right. If your name is not in there, you really not know. So, okay. luckily for me, my name is in IMDB. Okay. So, it, because of the Triple D movie. So, now... I can talk to people about certain things I like to do, or this is my ambitions. I want to be a director, blah blah blah, and I can do all those things and still do it because I I got my foot in the door, and I know how to get things done. So, okay, let's talk about the maths. Okay, you know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, sir. The old maths. You know what I'm saying? So I see you got your podcast going on. What's your podcast, man? Uh, podcast Swish for Real Basketball on YouTube. You can, Swish. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, straight switch, you know what I'm saying? So, and I see you got Boogie Bob Boogie on Bob. there. Boogie, Boogie Bob. Bob, the motherfucking Dallas legend on there, man. That's crazy, man. And we was talking about this off camera for my viewers. How, how did you and Boogie Bob link up? Man, Boogie, that's my guy, man. You talking about a guy who knows basketball? Right. Boogie is the one, man. Boogie, me and Boogie I linked up because uh, I used to coach uh, youth basketball um, back in, because you know, I had... My wife, she wanted to. Um, let me give y'all the backstory. <laughs> I didn't want to coach basketball at all. You know what I mean? So mm. we moved into uh, Arlington Park, AP, in the hood, basically where you know where our kids were, were in elementary school. So when we first moved there, because we moved from Richardson to there, I mean, because we lived in a house. Well, we was renting a house back then. Right. We were still young, and our kids were like babies at the time. So, but they was going to elementary by the time we got there. So anyway. The hood was so bad at the time, my nigga. It was like, it was fights every day, niggas just fighting all the time. And, you know, my wife was like, I don't want my kids out there in this shit. I said, I get it. I mean, so let's keep them in the house. She said, I don't want to keep them in the house either. So 
the rec center was, you know, they summertime <laughs> was when the shit was really going down. So the rec center had a little old basketball program that they was trying to start. Right. So my wife goes down. I'm like, okay, I'm finna gather up all these kids out here, and we finna go teach them basketball. So I ain't, uh, no, I'm good. You can, you can have that because I didn't want to deal with all them kids at right. the time. So she she said, fuck it, I do it myself. So she went down there. And it was like 30 kids showed up, bro. Mm. 30. It was like really literally three teams. Dang. Three teams that was down there. And she tried it for a good week or two. And then she just like, Mm-mm. you got to come out here and help me with these kids. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I, ain't got, I don't know anything about coaching, which I really didn't. So I went out there. I did some studying. Um, cause I mean, before I jump into anything, right, man, I right. do my study. You know, yeah, so you gotta, you gotta study. Yeah, study you know, a little bit of psychology, studying the kids and all that shit. You know what I mean? I did it all I, before I even went out there. So then I structured it, and then once we structured it, she took a team and I took two teams. Okay. I mean, so I had I had the older boys and then like the kind of younger boys, so that we practiced all the time. We we, and then, man, we got so good. I mean, it's my first time coaching. I ain't never coached basketball. These kids went all the way to the championship, bro. Mm. That's how good they were. That's how I. I mean, with the shit that I've learned, how to, you know, you know, everything. I'm back. I was a hooper anyway, so right. it was, I was naturally hooping. So I was. I know how to teach them how to drop step and cross over and all that shit. But as far as man, running plays, moving the balls, all that stuff like that. That was something I had to learn to teach them. So okay. as I learned it, I taught them, and they learned it, and they made it all to the championship to to lose by two. <laughs> lose by two. Not by two, the by motherfucking two. Mighty Ducks, nigga. <laughs> man, the little kids. Not but by. you know what's crazy, though, man? Once me and my wife did that, bro, the hood changed, bro. Right. It, it, it became quieter. One of them more fights. Everybody was just cool and like you know, they they start calling me. You know, my my real name is Mike. They say Mr. Mike, Mr. Mike. Right, right. Like, they just like even the hood niggas, man. They was like, bro, because we was helping they little brothers and shit. You know, become better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, I grew up in the project, so I I get it. I mean, I had to go through. I like so I used to. I had to. I learned how to box and I learned martial arts just to even be able to handle myself. You know right. What I'm talking about? So people wouldn't fuck with me after a while. They're like, this nigga know how to fight. You know, it is what it is. <laughs> Right, yeah, yeah. now nah, I say nigga discipline. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I didn't want to fight a yeah. lot, man. But I had yeah. to, man. But it is what it is. But like I said, we uh, taught those kids how to play basketball. They, you know, I was. I told their parents, I'm gonna, man. I don't, I don't I'm gonna whoop your kid's ass. And if you're gonna have to get him or something. But they was like, yo, whoop his ass. You right. Know what I mean? But I, ain't, yeah. I, I think yeah. it was only one kid I had to pop. What took you motherfucker so long? We was stuck in traffic. I could have walked the way I wanted to go. Man, I love you. Shit. Fucked up my high. Give me a life. A life. If you go to paradise, you better take a care. Drive some That's some good shit. <laughs> <laughs> Where you get that shit from, Mom? I got it from Columbia, motherfucker.